Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Bespoke Chats. Uh, for this episode, I'm going to try wearing a camera on my head, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, so this episode, I was going to talk about the drum sequencer and all the stuff you can do there, but instead I just had this thing I've been working on that I just finished recently, so I'm really excited about it, so I wanted to talk about that. Uh, so a couple months ago, I got this keyboard, the uh, Complete Control S61, uh, which, like, you look at the ads, it's super cool. It's got these uh, lights on top of every key that are full RGB and screens with these encoders at the top. Uh, unfortunately, they don't release any sort of API or any way to control the lights or the screen. They have sort of a MIDI mode, but it's very limited uh, in what you can do other than using their editor. Um, so, like, you can get all this functionality if you use their complete software, uh, but if you are a programmer with your own stuff or something like that, you're, you're kind of SOL. Uh, so, after a couple weeks of work, I finally got it reverse engineered, so I have control over everything, and it's fully integrated into Bespoke now, so I wanted to show some of that stuff. Um, so, first of all, we've got all the keys here uh, that are lit up, so I have them lit in the same way that my launch pad is lit up, where uh, the, the green note is the tonic, the brighter notes are in the pentatonic, and the dark notes are outside the pentatonic but still on the scale. Um, so you can see if I change like which scale it is, so I'm changing the root now, so you, like if I went to C uh, major, you can see that it lights up all the white keys. Uh, and then if I follow along, let's put it on maybe uh, D-sharp Aeolian, you can, then you can play it. So when I press notes that are in the key, they turn red. If I press notes outside the key, they turn blue. Uh, so I think this is going to be, I'm trying to learn piano, so I think this is going to help me a lot uh, and be sort of a good guide to help me figure out when I'm playing in key, what notes are outside of the key, and all that. Uh, you also get some really cool stuff with this feedback. For example, like if I turn on the uh, a quarter device here and make it play like a triad, you can see it lights up all the notes in the triad. Or if I turn on an arpeggiator, you can see which notes are playing. Which is really helpful. Uh, the second part of this is that I have the displays at the top working, which is really cool. So, like right now I have these mapped to uh, the controls of the FM synth that I'm playing with here. So. I turn the arpeggiator off. So I have my sound here, but I can use the sliders to adjust. But the really cool thing is, so you can see, you know, the position of all the sliders. You can also see it automatically pulls down the name of the slider and the current value. So you can see, like, I can adjust the harmonic ratio here, and it shows the display at the bottom. And, like, if I map a new one, um, it'll automatically pull it down. So let's map, let's add a new one. Uh, let's map this control here, which is 105, to, let's say, the down sample on a bit crush. There. So now you can see that it's updated so that down sample is there, and I can I can adjust it there. Cool. Uh, another really cool thing is that uh, each of these encoders has a touch sensor on it. So if I touch it, then you can see it uh, will light up. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it'll light up the uh, parameter on the screen. So you don't have to change it. You can just sort of touch it and see what it is. Uh, I've also got multiple pages here. so. This page is an oscillator. Let me go back to the first page and turn the down sample off. So I've got like a sine wave oscillator, and I can see what frequency it is here. Oh, it's this triangle actually. So I can change it to a sine, square wave. So that's pretty cool. Um, cool, and uh, I think that's it. I just wanted to show that off. Uh, it was pretty fun. I'd never reverse engineered anything before, so it was really cool to get it working. Uh, I'm really excited 
to have it in bespoke. This probably doesn't affect a lot of bespoke users because I'm sure you probably don't have the complete control, but if you did, then you would have full support. Uh, so, cool. So next time I will talk about the drum sequencer, uh, which is this guy here, uh, and I'll show you all the little ins and outs of how it works. So, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.